Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray with Let's Make Art and we are a community of people who love to watercolor and so every week we do different watercolor projects for all varying stages so whether you're a beginner you should be able to follow along just fine or if you've been doing watercolor for years you can pick up your brushes and just paint along with us it's super fun so this week we are actually going over this koi fish so there's lots of great colors super fun um, and I'm really excited to show you guys how to do this in just four easy steps. So the products that I'm using today, my brushes, are rounds. I always use rounds for watercolor, they're really great. Round six for my larger areas and then round two when I do more detail lines. And then the colors I have today are black, iris blue, amber yellow, and daffodil yellow. And I have here my butcher palette tray. I just like having a large space where I can mix my color. So usually I just take a bit of my color, put it kind of on the side here, a few inches away from each other. And then that way I have all of this space to mix, which is perfect because I love mixing my colors. And we do offer um, kits for these projects. So if you don't have art supplies, you're welcome just to order the kits. And if you do order our kits then you are going to get your paints in these little bottles and um, how you can open those up. They come with a little stopper so they don't leak. We've run into that before. We, we've had that problem before. So we put in these little stoppers, they just pop right out. And then I just take my brush, a clean brush, dip my brush in and put some here on my palette. Or you can dump it right on your palette, uh, whatever's easier, but if you kind of just take some out, then you have some left over if you want some to paint a little later on. Okay. So the four steps that we're going to go through today for our fish, um, number one, we're going to do the shadows on the white part of the koi fish. Now with koi fish, um, sometimes you think that with watercolor and that it's white, you just leave it white. Um, so the white part on the fish, you're like, oh, I don't need to paint anything on that. But actually, even on white parts of animals, there is light and shadow reflecting off of it. And so we need to make sure that we paint that or else it's going to look flat. Um, when we put in a little bit of color and a little bit of light and shadow on the white areas and it creates form on the white part of our fish. So step one, we're going to put in our, our lights and our shadows on the white part of our fish. Step two, we're going to start putting in our orange spots over the koi fish. Step three, we're going to do our fins. And then step four, we're going to do our detail work like our eyes and maybe do a little bit of the um, scales on the fish there too. So I'm going to go ahead and start. Now for my, the white part that I'm doing here, I'm going to get my brush and I'm going to mix a little bit of black with a tiny bit of iris blue. And I get this really pretty like bluish gray. And on the outline I provided, you can, you can trace this at home. So you can, if you get the kit, it's all included. Or if you're just doing this at home, you can find the outline on our website. And I have um, some areas here, like this area right here, this area right here, where I kind of am showing you where we're going to start putting in those shadows. So I'm going to grab this gray and blue mixture that I have here. And you can see I already have a little bit of paint flex from just dumping out the paint. I'm not going to worry about those. I'm not going to touch them because in there, that's actually going to smear the color. So I'm just going to let those be and not worry about it. So I'm going to put in my, my darker color here. Just like that. And then I'm going to rinse my brush and kind of blend out on the sides here. So the whole goal is for this like central area to be the darkest part of the shadow. And I'm going to kind of blend up to where these other outlines go for the spots. And I'm going to overlap it a little bit. And this is why we're doing the shadows first because I'm going to overlap it and then when we put in our orange we can just paint on top of it and I'm not worried about it. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this back fin part. I'm going to kind of put in my shadows here and then rinse my brush. 
Now I do have a little bit of yellow tint to my water and so when I spread it there's like a yellowness but that I actually think that that lends itself to the koi fish coloring really well. So I like it. And then on this side we do the same thing. And this one there, there's not a strong um, like stripe as, as the other ones. This one it's just going to be more of an even wash. And even just means that there's not an area that's going to be much darker than another area. It's going to be kind of even in terms of darkness or lightness. Move your left hand down. There. So I'm just kind of putting in some color, putting in some shadow. And you can see already just by looking between these two fishes that with the shadow that we put in, this one already has more dimension than this one. And that's just from putting in just like a, a soft blue shadow on our fish. Another thing you want to keep in mind when you're, when you're putting in shadows is you want your brush stroke to kind of mimic the shape of the fish. So I'm, when I'm putting in my shadows, I'm not doing dashes up and down like this. It's almost like my brush is following the form of the fish if, as if it was painting directly on a real fish. See how it kind of has this curved line? That's just something to keep in mind, mind when you're putting in um, shadows or light and dark anywhere. You want to keep that brush stroke true to the form. Okay. And now I'm gonna to go to my other fish and I'm just gonna use that same color that I was using. I might add a touch more blue to that. And same thing, I'm gonna put in, in this area that I kinda of already have outlined for you. Then I'm gonna rinse my brush and blend it out. Now, if you need to turn your paper over and around so it's easier for you to kind of blend that out, you're welcome to. Just do whatever feels most comfortable to you. Now, on the other side of this fin here, see I have a fin going down the middle here, so this other side, there's actually going to be a stronger shadow here, and that's just from the fin itself casting a shadow. And then you blend that out all the way to the tip of the tail. And then I'm going to do same thing, shadow on this part. And I'm keeping that curved brush stroke. And then I'm blending out to the sides. And then just using, I'm not even rinsing my brush or grabbing more paint in between, just using this paint from blending, I'm just gonna fill in this other side with more of an even wash. And then, <laughs> I'm going to do some shadows on the fins here to the white part of the fins. We have a little guest right here. <laughs> He's painting with us today. It's fine. It's fine. Welcome to Missouri. Okay. So I'm going to do just an even wash on the fin parts of my fish. So um, just really, really light wash. And again, wash is even in terms of light and dark. And if you are doing a wash and it's just too dark for you and you're like, how do I make this lighter? All you have to do is add water. That's all you need to do. And that is what makes it lighter. So I'm going to do just very light washes here where my fins are. Filling that in. And then do that on both sides. Both, both
both fish here that we have going on. Now, I know you're looking at your painting and you're like, this still looks weird. That's okay, it does. Animals always look weird to the very end, so don't stress about it. Honestly, they don't look right until you put in eyeballs. And we, I don't put in the eyeballs till the very end. So, you know, don't stress out. Okay. So we just finished um, step one, which is putting in our shadows on the white parts of our fish. We just did that using a very soft mixture of the black and the iris blue. So we got this really pretty kind of gray, purpley blue um, going on. And then the next part that we're going to do here is we're gonna start putting in the spots on our koi fish. So I'm going to take my wet brush here. And um, whenever I get my brush wet, I always kind of tap it off to the side and that way it's not like dripping all over my painting. So I kind of get my brush wet, take it off. I'm gonna grab some amber here. And I have two different colors here for us to do the spots. I did the amber yellow and the daffodil yellow. And the reason why I did that is because I kind of want the spots to fade into a really strong orange. So the daffodil yellow is gonna go more on the edges of the spots. And then the central part is gonna be more of that amber yellow. So I'm gonna, <laughs> he's just, the fly's just really excited about the fish. That's okay. So I'm just gonna take some daffodil yellow and mix a tiny bit of the amber and just kind of start going along the edges here with a lighter wash. So now I have this like nice pretty yellow. And you can let it get a little bit messy. See how I'm not doing like an exact perfect line where it has to be like this really strong area. I'm kind of letting it blend a little bit, having different lines going on. And then now, after I put in my yellow, I drop in my orange, my am well, my amber yellow, which reads very orange. And I just do it right in the middle And I'm gonna fill in the rest of this area. Now notice on this first fish that there is actually this front area on the nose that is still um, white. So just kind of leave that area bare as you're starting to paint it. And then when we do the eye, we'll go back to it. And then I'm gonna do drop in some more color on top of that. So you can see already that we have this really beautiful, strong orange, to this yellow and I want to help this blend a little bit more this is looking a little too chunky like separated for me and so to help it blend all you have to do is get a damp brush and kind of just smooth it back and forth and it kind of gets rid of that super strong line you blend that out oh look at that color it's so good okay so we're basically just gonna repeat that process for all of the spots. So I did the first you know, big huge spot on the head of my first fish, and now I'm kind of going through and doing the other spots as well. And if you wanna save time, you can go ahead and we can just do the daffodil on all of these areas. Now I don't wanna do the daffodil on the other fish though, because then that would take it, um, by the time I did the daffodil on all of this fish and then went back to this one to put in the orange, then the um, daffodil would have dried and it wouldn't bleed out quite like how I'd want it to. So you still wanna work fairly fast to get this natural kind of bleed and blend. Did you call it orange? I, I called it orange, it's actually amber yellow. <laughs> good catch, good catch Al. I'm always there to cut you down. <laughs> but it just reads very orange to me. And then the wonderful thing with watercolor is this is a very wet area and I'm kind of just dropping in the amber yellow and just letting it stay there and it's gonna just kind of move on its own and it just does this really wonderful, beautiful thing on its own that I love. So I'm not gonna like mess with it too much. 
But you'll guys see, if you're painting with these paints at home, you are just going to love the color. It's so bright and vibrant. I love it so much. Okay, and then I have just a little on the tail end here, I have a little spot of orange or amber yellow. And I'm gonna pick some up and just at the very end here, kind of almost like, feels like a corner to me or something. And then I'm gonna kind of blend it out with the damp brush. Okay, so I have the, the spots on my first fish and now I'm gonna to move to my second fish and it's just, it's the same process. We're gonna start with our daffodil, mix a tiny bit of amber in there and then just start kind of filling it in. Remembering that the edges are not concrete. You can let those blend and bleed. Now, if your um, white area put, that we put down this, this shadow is still super wet, then it might bleed into each other. Um, so if that's the case, just make sure it's dry before you start painting the spots. But what if it does bleed? If it does bleed, you can just, um, usually if something starts to bleed and I wasn't expecting it, all I do is I just take my paper towel, lift off the color where it bled into, and then just wait for it to dry. That's it. And it might look a little bit like bleedy after, but sometimes you just gotta let things roll. That's what, that was what we did in our last uh, live that we did. It's like, just let it roll, just let it be. It's beautiful and it's fine. Okay, so I dropped in my amber yellow and this line is still really reading really strong to me where this daffodil yellow is. You can see on, on this fish that there's a softer blend to it and I really like how that looks. So I'm gonna try and do that same thing. I'm gonna get my brush, it's clean. I'm just gonna get it kind of damp and I'm gonna start blending out this yellow a little bit. It just makes the transition a little softer. And for me, that just reads more natural to what you would see. Okay. Now on the second fish, so I did provide, here's the outline that you would see on your online if you download it or if you got it. Now you can see here that I did not outline these spots right here. I only did this first one. Um, if that happens to you, don't stress out. It's a painting. It's just, just kind of eyeball it. It doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm just gonna eyeball it. There's kind of an area over here where there's a spot. And there's an area over here that there's a spot. So just kind of do your best. Whatever you do, it's gonna look great. So I put that in, I'm gonna blend out the edges a little bit with my damp brush. And then I'm gonna drop in my amber, that really strong, vibrant color. Just like that. I feel like we need to get your damp brush on a t-shirt. Get, get your damp brush. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's perfect. Get your damp brush. And we're starting again with our daffodil on these spots back here. Kind of letting it blend. Blending it out just with a damp brush and then I drop in, I drop in some color, drop in my amber. And then I'm gonna help blend this a little bit because this there's a strong line between the amber and the daffodil that I put in. So to kind of help mix that, I'm gonna mix a color in between on my palette. So I grabbed some amber, put it in with my daffodil, and then I'm gonna kind of go and mix those things together so it's not such a strong, I, you don't want like a really soft yellow wash with like just dots of bright amber. If that's what's happening to your paper, then let those mix a little bit, mix it on your palette and then kind of blend those areas together so it's not just, so it doesn't just look like kind of fireworks on the spot. Does that make sense? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then again on this little tail, there's like a little 
touch of orange right here on that end. Just like that. And then using my damp brush, I get it wet, pat it off on my towel. I'm gonna blend this out just a little. Now, um, another problem that you might run into is maybe you're starting to kind of blend something else and it's just too much color, too much water. There's just too much on there and it's not light enough. So that's what's happening here. I wanted this to blend out, but it kind of was too strong for what I wanted. So you can actually lift color up with a clean brush. Just get it wet, get it damp, and just lift up and then pat it on your paper towel. So you're basically picking up the paint and the water with that brush. And then now it's not so dark. It's a softer transition. Okay, so looking at my fishes, I got all my spots. We just finished doing step two, which was putting the spots in for all of our fish. And now we're gonna move on to step three, which is putting in our fins. So this is where we're gonna put in a little bit more color on them and maybe some line work. So I'm gonna to switch to my round two brush. And um, what I'm going to do here is on these fins, and you can see here on the original painting that they have like, almost like veins, like orange veins that are, that kind of sprout out from the corner of the fin and kind of go out. And that's what we're gonna mimic here. So I'm gonna take my round two. And the reason why I'm gonna move to this is because it is a smaller brush with a smaller body so I can get a nice thinner line. And I'm gonna mix, I'm gonna mix the colors together my daffodil and my, my amber here. And then from this corner going out, I'm kind of splaying out just with some lines. Now, this area is very wet, so you wanna be very careful when you go to do this that you don't rest your hand down and pick up all that color and then move it around on your paper. So I'm actually going to... That's never happened. <laughs> it never happened, no. It happens like every time. You're not alone if this happens to you. Okay, so I'm actually gonna switch my paper around so then wherever my hand is, it's not on the painting. So starting from this corner, um, I'm just gonna kinda do some thin lines splaying out. So I'm gonna have one this way. They, they're almost like, do you guys remember when you were younger and you did like the sunshine rays? It's like that same idea, except this sun is like the little, this corner is the little sun. And the lines don't have to go all the way to the fin. A couple of mine did, that's okay. I like to do them various lengths. Um, and so just, um, just do a kind of a few going out, try and make them very light and, um, and very thin. And a good way to make them thin is just to go really light pressure with your brush. So same thing on this one, I'm just kind of splaying out almost like sunshine rays. Just like that. And then I have this little little guy back here. Don't forget this, this little fin. We're gonna do some sunshine rays. Okay. So, <laughs> this fly, okay. So I'm gonna go do my tail fin and then I'm like, oh shoot. I didn't do my shadow color on that. And the reason why we wanna do our shadow color first is if we, um, cause it's an even wash. And if I put the orange splotches down first and then try to do like a gray even wash over it, it would just make the orange stripes bleed. So, um, but it's no problem. It's not a big deal. I'm just gonna grab the gray color that I already have, mix on my palette and fill that in really quick. So if you miss a step as you go, or if there's an area where, that you didn't see, don't stress, you can always go back and do it. Okay, but I'm not gonna do my, my little orange splices on this yet because it's wet. So if I try to do thin orange lines on this, it would just bleed out and it wouldn't be these really strong straight lines that I have here. So just let that dry before you move on to that area. But we do have this section here in the middle that I, that I already outlined. It's kind of like a, I don't know, 
slit or an oval or something. Um, <laughs> Uh, right? That's what it looks like. That's actually a top fin, but we're looking at it overhead. So it's not going to be like poking out of the body like these ones are. It's foreshortened because we're looking at it from the top. So um, that little white area, um, it's not a mistake. It's supposed to be there and it's a little fin. And we are going to do the same kind of thing, these little kind of stripe, you know, sun rays going out. Um, but we're going to start from the bottom here. So like you can, it, to help you, you can like do an outline just on this bottom, just like that. So it's like, that's the bottom of the fin. This is, this is the part that meets the body. And then we're just going to kind of sun ray out, out and up. Just like that. And now, let's see if this is dry. And you can see if something's dry just by touching it. That's what I do. So this is dry, so I'm just gonna do a little orange lip on the edge here. Just right here. Just a little orange and a couple sun rays out. Just like that. I'm gonna sunshine sun rays out here on my fin. Just thin, thin lines. <laughs> do you guys see that fly? <laughs> it will not leave me alone. Okay. So you're gonna kinda thin line it out, going across. But remember to make the starting line the same point, which is this little corner here where it meets. And then for this one, this fin is actually um, turned. So these ones are flat, which is why we can see them kinda splayed out. Now this one is almost like turned up and moving. So we're only just gonna do a little orange um, tip right here. I have a little outline of the front of the fin. I'm just gonna follow that. So this one is kind of moving. You know, you know how fins move. And then I'm gonna do a little uh, sun rays out on this little back fin here. And then same thing that we did on this side for the fin, I'm gonna do it in this one. So I'm just gonna do a line across the bottom, which is gonna be on the right side. The right side is the part that's attached to the body of the fin, of the fish and then kind of just do a few sun rays kind of going up and out like that. Okay, and then just do a couple little splays out here on the tail. It doesn't, it's not a science, it doesn't have to be perfect. It, it's not one of those where it's like, make sure you get, you know, five lines exactly don't do that. Just kind of do it to where it's like, yeah, that feels right. That, you know, like that amount feels really good. Okay. Uh, we just finished step three, which was we put in our fins and now we're going to move on to step four, which is detail work. So this is where we're going to put in our eyes and we're going to create actually a little bit of depth on the spots of our fish, just using a little bit of, of shadow. And this is where we're going to introduce um, black into our painting too. So, I'm gonna take my black, I'm gonna do my eyes first. So on the outline here, in case you guys can't see it very well on the painting itself, I have a circle and then a dot within that little circle. So the, the smaller inside circle, that is the part that's gonna be black. And I'm still using my two because I need it to be nice and small. I'm gonna do both sides. Like so that. Kermit the Frog. It does look a little Kermit the Froggy. It does, a little Muppety. Um, to help that give it a little bit more form, we need to put in a shadow um, right here. So on like the inside of the eyeball where it meets the orange part of the fish, I'm gonna put a black line there like that. And same thing on the other side. And then I'm just gonna rinse my brush, get it nice and damp, and just softly kind of blend the shadowing out. Just 
blend it out like that. And then that, that way it feels like more of its own form as opposed to like, just like two dots on the side of a fish like that. And then um, what I like to do just with the damp brush, so not even, I'm not picking up more paint or anything. There's just like a really light wash. I'm kind of going on the side here. Of, so I'm kind of rounding out this, the, my eyeball. Just like that. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this side, my other fish. I'm gonna put in my little black eyeballs that make him look kind of puppety. And then I'm gonna do a little line on the top, kind of like an eyelid. Then you blend it out. This is just like a soft shadow we're creating. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we put in our eyeballs, but I still wanna finish this up with a little bit more detail work, a little bit more depth. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to mix a little bit of black with my amber, just a tiny, tiny bit of black. So it almost becomes this like brown kind of. And just um, in a couple areas here, I'm gonna do, you know how fish scales have that kind of, that loop, loop, loop. We're gonna kind of mimic that same thing. So um, I'm gonna kind of like, just here and there, do a little few, um, like kind of these curved lines. And I'm actually gonna go back with the damp brush and kind of blend this out so it doesn't just look like decoration on top. But we just want a little bit of darker color in there. We want a, a tiny bit, like a hint of the texture of the fish. So I put in those little scales and then I'm just gonna take a damp brush and kind of just blend them out just a little. So then that way it's not just like planted right on top. And this is, if you have any white areas on your fish that are kind of standing out to you, this is a good time where you can kind of just blend some areas and let it be kind of loose and watery and just kind of like blend some things out. And then that way it doesn't feel so sectioned. Um, sometimes you just need to take a wet brush and blend some things together. <laughs> you just need to blend some things together in life. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we all need a wet brush. Maybe we all need a wet brush for our life, blending some things. Okay. And then um, I'm going to do the same thing on this back scale here. I'm just going to do a couple. but this edge is looking just a little too strong for me. So I'm just gonna blend it just a little. Kind of let that move. And if it gets too yellow, you can try and pick that up with your brush, just like that. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the same thing on this other side of my little fish. I'm gonna do a couple little scales. To be honest, I don't know if I'm doing them in the right direction, but uh, I feel like it would come across as scales, so I'm not worried about it. If you know the correct direction of the scales, then paint it that way. I don't, so I'm just kind of winging it. And then now I'm just gonna kind of softly blend these areas out. And that's just cause we wanna give just a hint of the texture of this fish. If we sat and put even scales across the entire fish with a nice outline, what it would actually do is it would, it would completely flatten the form that we have created so far with our fish because it's even and the value would be even. So we don't wanna do that. We wanna just give the viewer an idea of what these scales look like. We don't have to sit and draw each one for them to know. And 
and then I left a white spot on the tip of my nose for my fish and it's just looking a little too white so I'm going to go in with some gray and just kind of blend that out. Same. It's not a mouth. It's just like the the spot ended on the fish. So it's like the white part still, but it was too white. We wouldn't see the mouth on this fish because it would be underneath it. Don't look at me like I have any idea what that is. <laughs> <laughs> what? You're like look over here like, right? Right? Uh, You're like no. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So we put in um, a little bit of scale texture on our fish. Um, the only thing that's bothering me, and it's the very last step that we gotta do, is I actually kinda wanna blend out this top fin a little bit. Okay, I guess there's two more things, okay. I'm gonna blend out this top fin just a little, cause this stark white, I think, is just sticking out too much from the fish. So just with a damp brush, just very softly, I, t I just did kinda more of the top. And same thing on this side. I'm just going to softly kind of blend that. Here. Blend. You can blend wherever. You can just... Blending is my favorite thing. I don't know if you've noticed. I say it a lot. Okay. Now the last thing that we really want to do is the eyeballs, the actual white part on our fish is super white so white that the because even eyeballs itself they have shadow on them because they're a form they're a shape they're a three-dimensional thing and so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to put a little bit of shadow on the very top of my eyeball just like a light gray going here and that just by itself just doing that soft little touch is going to make it feel more like the actual um, an actual three-dimensional thing. Wait, is that water or is that like gray paint? This was, I just, I just picked up a little bit of the gray paint that I had on my palette already um, from doing the shadow of the fish. So you kind of just, and if you want, you can even try and take from the black of the pupil and use that. You can try and do that. Now, the thing I got to be careful on this side is I can just see from the glare that this is actually still pretty wet on my fish. So I'm going to try and lift up some of this paint so that way if like water touches it, it won't bleed everywhere. And I'm going to do the same, same thing on this side. I'm going to just put like a light gray. See how that bled? That's okay. I'm just going to pick up my paper towel and blot it. Just like that. And a lot of watercolor is just kind of like, I feel like it's almost a, a balance or a dance of just, um, you know, there's gonna be some parts that are imperfect, like this, this area that bled out a little bit. And us, as the person making it, like that really stresses us out because we're like, this is so obvious that this kind of bled out and it's a mistake. But the thing is, is if we just kind of try and minimize it a little bit by picking it up and then just move on and let it go, most of the time the people, another person looking at it will not be able to tell. And I think that watercolor is really forgiving in terms of this kind of accidental um, art that's a little bit loose. And so some of those things you just, it's just us and it's our more of our like, you know, critical being of being critical ourselves that those things hang us up and don't let things like that hang you up just keep on going okay so i added a little bit of shadow to my eyes we put in our detail work and our kind of um, scale texture for our fish and that's it we're done it looks great so the four steps that we did today to make this fish was step one, we put in the um, shadows on our whites. I liked doing that first because then our spots can kind of go over the <laughs> can kind of go over the shadows and it just makes more sense visually and that way it doesn't bleed everywhere. Step two, we put in the orange spots on our koi fish. Uh, step three, we did our fins. So we did our kind of splay out rays on our fins. And then step four, we just did those finishing touches with the black eyeballs, doing the scale texture on our fish, just a hint, and kind of adding a little bit more dimension to our eyeballs. And that's it. It looks great. 
Um, so if you're interested, we have kits for this um, on letsmakeart.com. You can just buy this kit one off by itself. Um, or what you can do, and it makes it easier for us and for you, is we have a subscription box. You get all the projects that we do every week in the month, mailed to your doorstep at the very beginning of the month, so you have everything you need for it to paint for projects with us. So both of those can be found on our website at letsmakeart.com. And um, I can't wait to see how you painted this. So if you painted it, post it, share it, and tag us in it. Um, our Instagram name is Let's Go Make Art, so you can just tag us right in it. Um, and if you want feedback or if you just want to share it, please do. Let's share our art. Let's create this really wonderful community of watercolors.